Hello, I'm Christian. Welcome to the second episode of Developer, the new video series from Bosch Rexroad, presenting our new automation platform called ControlX Automation. Last time, uh, we showed you a little bit about the development and the historical background of ControlX Automation. This time, we will take a closer look at the core of the system, the control. So, who would be the best person to help me with that? It would be Kai. He is the very first engineer who unboxed the ControlX core at a customer site, and we will do together today an unboxing session with you. Hi Christian, glad to be here, especially since I saw the first episode with Holger and you explaining the birth of ControlX automation. Now I'm a bit nervous as well. Ah, you don't need to. We start slowly. Maybe you introduce yourself and tell me what you are doing at Bosch Rexroad. What is your role in ControlX automation? Okay, that I can do. I'm Kai Müller, working for Bosch Rexroad since 19 years, always in the topic of automation. So as you, as my boss, you should know, I'm in the technical sales um, support department on the customer side, quite often supporting the customer and be the interface between development and customer, trying to shape the perfect product for our customers. On your opinion, what did we do better on ControlX automation than our competitors? Hmm, okay, let me take a look on the bigger picture. Yes, please. Nowadays and in the future of production, you have shorter product life cycles, more competition, and you need a better automation. So we need to be more efficient and more flexible. Right, and that counts especially for the automation platform. Fixed and complex systems don't fit in this world anymore. That's why we decided to start on the green field again, a revolution. So would you say we did it, create a revolution? Yes, absolutely, just compared with current control technologies. That's it. I can feel you want to start directly, right? Yes, absolutely. So let me explain why we made this new approach. In contrary to before, building a machine means a lot of software development. The good foundation for this is our control system. The quality rises and falls with a good operating system. That is why ControlX Automation is based on an open source operating system? Yes, and not just some operation system, but Ubuntu Core. So we're talking about Linux? Right, Linux, Ubuntu is based on Debian and it's meanwhile one of the worldwide most used Linux operation systems. Unlike the existing platforms on the market, ControlX Core is not a proprietary system anymore. It's a real-time platform based on an open source operating system. So this is really an evolution, right? Yes, right. To have Linux now available for meshing controls opens a completely new world. I'm sure this will be the future of automation. Our customers, they will have a lot of benefits and advantages with our new platform. Absolutely, usability and especially programming the machine and the software and language you like. Does this mean um, those proprietary systems with their dedicated programming tools, they will become obsolete with ControlX Core? I would say so. Luckily, we don't have to live with these restrictions anymore, in difference to our competitors. As a newcomer, you can code your program in the language you like and know. Especially in real time, it's Python and C++, but we support many more languages. With ControlX Automations, we remove the barrier between controlling a machine and the IT world. And it's very easy to make your first program and project. Cool. I think in the next episodes, we will dig a little bit deeper into the features of Ubuntu. Sounds good, so let's start. Looks cool. That's all we need to get started. It's really small. Small but great. We implemented an ARM SOC with quad processor. If you don't have enough power, we can scale it up. And ARM gives us a future-proof technology. And this is the reason why it's so small and fast? Yes, small compared to our previous products. Looks like our control lost some weight. <laughs> yeah, slim fit. For usability, and to keep it simple, we try to check what state of the art in consumer tech. So modularity, flexibility, and ease of use. So the big advantage is we can load a lot of extensions on software side, which have been in former versions external. For example? 
for example, a VPN router or a firewall. So despite the high integrity of the software, we have a high security level through security by design. Okay. So, Kai, show me how this thing is working. Uh, sure. And I will take the time, how long it takes you. Oh yeah, you can do that. So first we have to connect our power supply. We connect our Ether cut to connect the drives and the Ethernet for our engineering. That's all we need. We have different possibilities for our connection. We will do it with the functions of our Windows 10, just via IPv6 and UPnP, so we can directly start. You can see the control X core here within the network environment and double click it. For those of you who know how you usually connect to control, this is quite impressive. Yes, and for all others, it's absolutely normal. It's working like it should. A second possibility is through our software, Control X Works. Here we have an overview and can see our Control X core and just click the IP address. I can see you have some more controls in there. Right, those are virtual controls. You can use them to try your software or plan your setup even before you have a real hardware or before you deploy your software on the real control in the production. The third possibility is directly via your web browser and IP address or name. Just type the default IP address or the unique IPv6 address. The connection is TLS encrypted, like for mobile banking, but the Bosch record signed certificate is unknown for the browser. That's why you see here, not safe. I just need to type in username and password and we are on the landing page. So this means we don't need any kind of software on the PC? Yep, the interface is embedded on our ControlX core. It's not necessary to install a software on your PC. You could take a tablet or your smartphone and connect. Wow, this was less than two minutes, Kai. And that's our knowledge section where we have access to, for example, GitHub or our developer community. Right, for the community, we have a separate episode where we show all the details. Oh, that sounds great. Here we have some settings for connectivity, for example, where you can check your IP address or even change your IP address to a dynamic address. You can have both in parallel as well. So here Linux also brings some benefits? Absolutely. I remember the old times with the proprietary systems where you had to implement drivers manually or even you had to code it because they just did not exist. And now with a new Linux system, we have a completely new possibilities. For example, I have a USB Ethernet adapter here. If I connect it and refresh the page, you can see here we have an extra Ethernet connection. And even more, wireless connection is possible as well. So a small Wi-Fi dongle, we put it here in this adapter and refresh our page. And you see here, we have also a wireless connection. So a lot of things are possible now with the new Linux system. We have also a central user management here where you can add users and groups and manage the access on the different interfaces for different users with different permissions. Great, and what else? We use, for example, the REST API. Okay, so you mean uh, uniform interfaces? Yes, right, so uh, standardized interfaces, um, with them the whole data world is open to us. Okay, so in the end, we make our customers independent of Bosch Rexroad because they don't need our software, our interfaces anymore? <laughs> yes, kind of, so we free our customers from us, we could say. So they don't need our software anymore. They can use open source and free software and just program in the language and the, the speech they like. We can use a community or the software development kit and then we can load the apps. This we can do here under home and install an app. Here we have three menu items, one with the currently installed apps. There you can choose if you want to see the system apps. The individual system apps can be updated separately. Yes, that's right. Uh, you can install almost all system apps without rebooting the system. Only the apps that affect the kernel, you need a reboot. Of course, for bootloader and kernel, you need a reboot. 
But in the future, you can also schedule your updates of the app. So you can make it, for example, on a Sunday where your factory is not running. We have also different possibilities where you can install an app from. For example, the online store or here the local storage where you can now install the apps we need. And that's what we're going to do now. Let's start our own project. Okay, for our first project, we upload now all the apps we need. Here on the plus, we need now the EtherCard Master app, we need the Motion, and we need the PLC. Now they are uploaded in our local storage. We now can now install the EtherCard Master. The EtherCard Master is now installed. Now we install our Motion app. And the last one is our PLC. Kai, how long does it take on average to bring a three-axis robot into motion? <laughs> Just let's try out now. Here you can see the automation overview. Now we can go in the automation section and go here on our EtherCut and create, create a new EtherCut master item. Going back to the automation, we see here already a topology mismatch because we have connected drives, but the drives are not configured, so we need to configure them. This we can do here via our I.O. engineering. We can click here and scan four devices. We see four devices have been found. We can add them here. Just rename like X, Y, Z, and our A axis. and we download our configuration. So we go back on our web page, on the EtherCut master, we see here our axes are configured and already up and running. So the EtherCut master is in operation. As a next step, we have to configure our axis profiles We have now to map all the access profiles to the corresponding values on the drives. As a next step, we configure our access. and we add an access profile to each axis. Now we configure four axes. The last point would be configuring a kinematic. So we add a new kinematic here. And add our axis to the kinematic. Now we can switch our motion configuration into running. So the last step is now we can chalk the kinematic a little bit, even without a PLC program. And you can see here our kinematic is moving. Last step would now to make a small automatic PLC program. We go back to the automation overview and open the PLC engineering directly from this menu. I already prepared a small project here that we don't have to code now and that costs us a lot of time. We just have to compile the program, log into the control 
and of course asking for security for a login so no one unauthorized is allowed to download a new program. And then we are ready to run the machine. That's it. Okay, Kai, what is your summary? The new ControlX core is something really special. It runs on an app-based operating system and is the most open system on the market. Thank you very much, Kai. Next week, we will talk about the mysterious data layer. As a guest, I will have my colleague Johannes, who actually wrote some of the code which we have seen today. The episode will be available from October 29th on. So, catch you on the next one to be two steps ahead. <laughs>